going to go over today is the drive mappings and how we access or how actually users access a network share instead of using a UNC path because the normal user doesn't understand UNC path. Again, just to recoup, a UNC path is backslash backslash the server name backslash the name of the share. So let's take a look at what ours is. So I'm in uh, server manager. I'm going to file and storage services. And I'm going to take a look at the share that's on my server core. So I'm going to go to shares. And on my server core, if I expand that, we have the net logon and the sysfile, which are the default Active Directory shares. And then we have the department share that we created. If I right click on that and select open share, it will actually open it in File Explorer using Da, 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 the UNC path. Now, this is important. A lot of examples you see online will show just that. They don't include the fully qualified domain name. The problem with that is it will only work on a local area network if you don't include the fully qualified domain name. So the 410 server core slash DEPT, that will only work on a LAN. You want to make sure that you use the fully qualified domain name so name resolution or DNS can identify the exact IP address of the server that you need to access, whether it be in your local LAN in a different subnet or VLAN or on a WAN connection at some other location. So you want to use always from this point forward, the UNC path should be the fully qualified domain name. This, what's highlighted, is the fully qualified domain name. All right, so that's how I'm going to access 410 server core dot my domain dot PRV slash department. That's how I'm going to access the share on my server core. So if I go to my workstation and log in as a user, with the correct password. And I want to access that department share. Okay, I can just type in server one. Actually, that was another share. So 410 server core dot my domain dot PRV slash the EPT. Okay, so there's the fully qualified domain name in the UNC path. I'm going to copy that because I'm going to be using that in a command line. So to map a network drive, we use the net command. And we've used the net command in the past. The net command is executed at the normal command prompt. So you can type net user or net use or net user and see the users on this particular computer. So these net commands are really useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the net command, but I'm going to use the net use, just like I did the first time up here, and it showed me that I'm using server one department, but it's not. there's no local drive letter associated with it. So I'm going to use the net use command with a drive letter, so net use, and let's say the letter uh, T colon, and then I'm going to paste in my, my uh, um, UNC path. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in there. Well, I think I have the wrong slashes here. I think this one wants forward slash. Oh no, I need a space. Sorry. That's what I'm missing. There we go. My bad. I didn't have a space in there. So net use the drive letter colon space, which I forgot my first command, and then the UNC path. So now if I type net use, I can see drive letter T is mapped to this UNC path. Well, let's take a look. For the user, they're obviously not going to type this net use command, but I'm just showing you that it's the net use command that maps the network drive in the background. So now if I go to this PC, guess what? I have a T drive mapped to the server core D 
DPT. So that's how I can reference it, T. There it is. So typically this drive mapping is done using group policy, which we'll talk about in another session. Okay, so now that we know how drive mapping works and using the UNC path, now we're gonna take a look at how we can automatically create a home folder for every single person, their own personal storage space to store all of their documents, downloads, desktop icons and desktop files they create, right? Their own location on the server that gets backed up every day. Instead of having them store everything on the C drive of their workstation, they store it on the server. So let's take a look. Okay, back to my server. What I wanna do is I wanna create another share. So I'm gonna create this share on server core. So let's take a look at volumes, server core. Well, again, we'll be it on the C drive. It should really be on a different drive letter, not the C drive, but we're gonna make this work here. Okay, down here, I'm gonna underneath shares on the 410 server core, I'm gonna create a new share. And we'll do a, a I think I'll do a little more advanced one this time. Oh, it won't let us, only quick. Okay, well then we do quick. <laughs> so server core, on the C drive, and it's gonna be created in the C shares folder, which is fine. And the share name, I'm gonna call it home. Users home folder. So now you can see the remote path. In their example here, they're missing that fully qualified domain name. So, that, that's fine, but just keep that in mind that that part is missing. So hit next and allow caching of share. Now permissions, these are folder permissions. Notice by default that share permissions, everyone has full control. If you want to, you can go back and change that. So it's just the domain users instead of everyone. But for now, we're gonna leave this. Folder permissions, I wanna change. I don't wanna inherit these permissions. So I'm gonna disable inheritance, convert them to explicit, and I'm going to get rid of users, actually, get rid of users, and I'm gonna keep administrators full control, creator owner full control, users should have read and execute. And I'm gonna change this, only apply these, Oops, not that one, this one right here, to this folder only. So if we take a look at it, the users of the domain are gonna have read and execute to this folder only. Okay, and if we hit okay, and yeah, sure, let's go customize permissions. So the system has full control for doing backups, administrators have full control, for being able to administer it. Users have read and execute on this folder only. And the creator owner has full control. And again, I remove the inheritance. Yeah, so if you select this and hit edit, you can go in and change applies to. Yep, hit okay, next and create done so now i have a home folder location so i'm going to right click on that and open share so now i can see files that are in here okay next thing we're going to do is we're going to now modify all my users so they will automatically get a folder created inside of this home share and they will have full access to that folder and no one else will have it this is really cool feature of Active Directory, kind of a hidden secret that will automatically do this for us so we don't have to create every single folder. And I like to have this shown at the same time that I do this. So now I'm gonna select my users, right click on those and go properties. So I'm, I'm modifying multiple user objects at the same time. 
And now I can change these different attributes of multiple user objects. Underneath the account, sorry, profile tab, I'm gonna change the home folder location. And I'm gonna say connect. Typically, best practice has been to use the H drive because H stands for home. And now I'm gonna put in the UNC path. Oh, the UNC path, I'm just gonna to have to manually type it in there. Oh no, here it is. So when I right click, opened it, it allowed me to see it. And then I'll paste it in there. Now this is the trick part. So again, if I go back to the beginning, it's backslash backslash, the name of the server, with the fully qualified domain name, the mydomain.prv slash home slash percent username percent. There's the trick. Percent username percent. What do you think that will do? Pull the username. So if, if I have a user called Sally Johnson, it'll create a folder called Sally.Johnson and replace this percent username with sally.johnson. You ready? Hit okay. Look over here on the right, see how they automatically got populated in? These folders automatically got created. I'm gonna right click on Sally, just take a look at what just happened. So if we go to security, you can see Sally has full control. Everyone else, you just have the creator, the system, and the administrators. So as an administrator, you can go into this folder and take a look at what Sally has for files in case she's having problems with a particular file or folder. So Bob cannot see it. Nobody can see what Sally has and vice versa. So now what happens? Well, let's log in as Sally and see what's gonna happen when she logs in. So I'm gonna log out as Bob Johnson over here at my workstation. I'm going to log in as Sally. Okay, so I should have an H drive that is mapped to Sally's home folder. So I go to this PC and there it is. There's the H drive mapped to server core, my domain. Double click on it. And now Sally can create new folders inside here and, oops, sorry, create new documents. And again, that's all off the H drive. So each person, each user that logs into my domain will now have their own home directory where they can store files on the server and they get backed up every night. Again, the drive mapping of a department share, we will do that in a group policy. So we'll take a look at group policies next session. Any questions? Yes. Space disk quotas. Yeah, you can enable disk quotas and you would do that within um, your file and storage services. That's another bigger topic. Yeah, so when we take a look at creating uh, new volumes and storage pools, we'll take a look at that.